Today on the spot, we get the latest this week on PlayStation Network and PC, demos of Iron Man 2 and Death Spank, and get a first look at Test Drive Unlimited 2. Today on the spot. Hello everyone and welcome to On The Spot for Saturday, May 1st. I am your host, Kevin Van Ord. Seated next to me is Sophia Tong, the great Sophia Tong. Now, this is May 1st, of course, yes. um, so Uno de Mayo. This is my first time hosting the show. I know, I'm so excited that you're taking the hosting seat. Absolutely, so I now declare Uno de Mayo to be Kevin Van Ord hosting On The Spot Day. Mark it on your calendars. Okay. Um, now you were saying something about the fifth though. The fifth is also important for Star Wars fans everywhere. The fourth, you mean? The, the fourth. fifth is Cinco de Mayo. Oh, that's right. Oh well, yeah. That, but that's minor. Minor. Compared to what Star, Star Wars, Wars fans Day? get. Yeah. May the fourth be with you. The fourth be with you. Yeah. Well, you've heard it here first. Um, it's been a busy week here at GameSpot. Um, Halo Reach. Yeah, the now playing is up from yesterday. So Absolutely. Everyone should check that out if you're interested in seeing some multiplayer action. Bunch of people in the office playing mm -hmm. the beta right now. Um, but we're not the only ones that have been busy. The news desk has also been busy. It's been a busy week in news. So to get us caught up, we're going to go over and take a look at the news right now. Hey everybody, it's your GameSpot news update for Saturday, May 1st. I'm Tor Thorson. Today's big news is once again coming straight out of Activision. This morning, the controversial publisher finally gave a name to this year's Call of Duty game, which will be subtitled Black Ops. Due out November 9th worldwide, the game will feature both competitive multiplayer and co-op, although it's unclear if the co-op mode will be for the full campaign. The game will be developed by Call of Duty World of War studio Treyarch and will feature similar jungle combat and a warfare of a colder variety. UK retailer listings reveal that the game will be set in Vietnam, Cuba, and the Arctic. Don't expect any modern warfare self predator drones, though. Last month's lawsuit by Jason West and Vince Zampella revealed that Infinity Ward has, or had, control of all Call of Duty games after the Vietnam War era. Also, online rumors peg Black Ops as being set in the 1960s and 1970s, months before the game's title was even revealed. Are you ready for some Super Street Fighter 4? Capcom is betting you are. The Japanese publisher has revealed that it has already shipped 1 million units of the highly rated game to retailers worldwide. The figure boosts a life to date shipments of all console Street Fighter games, which now total over 29 million units. The series began way back in 1987 in arcades and will continue to do so as Super Street Fighter 4 has been announced for arcades. In Japan, anyway. Well, those are your GameSpot headlines for Saturday, May 1st. For more news, head on over to news.gamespot.com. So interesting stuff happening across the industry. Ke Kevin, what are you doing? Oh, I'm sorry. I was uh, I'm celebrating uh, Uno de Mayo. You know, with Kevin Van Ord hosting the On the Spot Day. What's with the hats? Um, well, you celebrate with hats, right? And uh, what I'm doing is I'm actually uh, celebrating the fact that the Van Ord family conquered Mongolia on this date in really? some time in the past. Uh, you just made that up, didn't you? Well, here I want you to celebrate with me. I've got a I've got a hat for you as well. Oh, okay. Oh, it's heavy. Looks good on you. Hmm. Well, now that we're all decked out for the occasion, let's join Ricardo Torres for a look at Iron Man 2. Thanks, guys. So I'm here right now with David Allen from Sega, and he is about to tell us all about Iron Man 2, which is kind of a movie game, but not quite. Right, David? That's right. It's, it kind of takes you beyond the movie. We work with a guy called Matt Fraction, who writes the Invincible Iron Man series, which won an award at Comic-Con in San Diego earlier this year. And him and the designers from the game called Michael Kirkbride and um, Carl Brink kind of sat down at the start of the process uh, and kind of came up with a story that kind of, it fit in the Marvel Universe, the story, sorry, the movie universe, but slightly different. Basically, everyone knows that Tony Stark is Iron Man, uh, as you saw at the end of the first movie, and we carry that theme on. Um, but in our story, you find different factions. Um, it's basically a separate story to the movie that will come out next week. All right. Now... We check this out here, the, the basic core of the game is very similar to the original in that you have a selection of armor that you can customize, but you guys have given it a bit of a new treatment here, so you can, can you explain to us what we're checking out right here? Sure, so right now we're looking at Tony Stark's lab, um, and one of the reasons for that is because we found that with uh, the Iron Man games, uh, the fans are really fans of Tony as much as they are of the suit itself. So we wanted to bring elements of Tony into the series, uh, into the game, and um, we built out his lab, which, is, which is, what you, is what you'd see in the movie, to be able to use that as the, 
uh, location that people actually fabricate weapons uh, and build out their suits before going into a mission. So one of the key things you'd expect is the suit has several different weapons, the repulsors, um, the unibeam, uh, the missiles and all that kind of stuff. So you ex obviously you expect to update those uh, and upgrade them as you go through the game. But as you go through the game and you achieve objectives and complete missions, you collect research data or field data. And that's really the currency of the game. It, it allows you to basically go back to the lab before the next mission and begin fabricating weapons. All right, well, it's cool setting up the armor and all, but let's go blow some stuff up. Sure, great. Talk to us about the missions that we're going to be checking out here. What's this first one? Okay, we're going to show you two missions. This mission is Iron Man. We're going to show you Iron Man in the Mark VI suit, which is the suit for, uh, with the triangle chest piece, which will mean a lot to the fanboys. Uh, for those that aren't fanboys, they'll recognize it from aware. the movie. Great. Um, but just before we get into that, you can, you can play every suit that's in the movie. So every, movie, every suit you see in the movie, you get, get taken to a mission. In this mission, we're going to go up against one of the factions that Tony and Rhodey face in the game, uh, and that's going to be the Roxxon uh, faction, who are basically allied with some Russian, Russian separatists, led by a guy called General Shatilov, again from the, the uh, Marvel Universe outside of the movie. So one of the themes in the, uh, in the game is that uh, Stark technology has been stolen. Um, I think everyone knows that Tony made that declaration in the first movie. He didn't want to make weapons anymore. He wants to create technology for the good of the world. And that's something that carries through into this game. So, unfortunately, some people have managed to steal some technology of his and tried to weaponize it. And he's going back to retrieve it. So in the background there you can see a tanker. In there there's lots of, um, lots of uh, drones and uh, weaponry based on Stark's tech, which he wants to basically go and uh, knock out because he's a good guy. There you go, Sign signature um, move, a, f a favorite from the first, uh, first move, the ground pound. Um, that can use that to basically take out a, a group of enemies, get a kind of area of effect type uh, response from that. <coughs> you know that tanker that's floating up in the air? Oh that yeah. That, that's not a tanker exactly, that's kind of a helicopter. Yeah, yeah it is, yeah. So uh, again, something f uh, the fans of the, uh, the, the comic books will uh, recognize straight away is the, you know, the the shield heli carrier, which is uh, Nick Fury's, Fury's headquarters, and it's basically like an aircraft carrier that that, um, that flies. Now, from an arsenal standpoint, you kind of mentioned when we were in the armor room and the labs and stuff that the stuff that everybody expects Iron Man to have, he's got, and probably a little bit more. So, I've seen repulsors, I've seen the Unibeam. Um, can you talk to us about some of the other things that we're going to be able to use? Sure. Um, as you'd expect, there is shoulder-mounted weaponry as well. But what's really great about what we do with this game is the melee. Uh, we've spent a lot of time and effort making sure that you get that experience of up close and personal combat. And as you go into a mission, as well as being able to load out uh, a number of different um, weapons in, you, in the suit, like you can see we're using Repulsor right now and the missile battery, uh, as indicated by the icons on the top right and top left of the screen. You can flip those out by uh, choosing four before you go into the mission and load out just by tapping the pad. Uh, but also the, you can load out two melee routines. There are melee routines that are specific to each hero. So Iron Man has three different melee routines uh, with a var variety of moves. War Machine, ha War Machine has his own three uh, melee routines. And again, you can, you can load two of those and flip them out in between, um, in between what you need to do in your missions, which basically gives you some uh, flexibility in terms of defeating enemies. <laughs> now, um, let's check out, now that we've seen kind of what outdoors like with Iron Man, let's check our indoor action with War Machine. One of the key things about War Machine is more than just kind of a cosmetic change from the Iron Man armor. He has quite a few different abilities, so do you want to talk to us about how different War Machine's going to be from Iron Man? Sure, so really it comes down to their personalities and the kind of technology they have. Um, Iron Man's kind of all about speed, agility, uh, whereas War Machine is just about badass weapons. He, he basically, he's not subtle. No, absolutely not. So, and of course, Tony's really smart. He has that, you know, he's the this, this you know, smartest man in the universe when it comes to technology. So he has weapons that are kind of based on energy, which uh, you don't need to reload as frequently as War Machine. So he's great for kind of doing uh, lots of multiple enemies um, in certain missions. Uh, he can hack terminals more effectively than um, the War Machine can. So, for example, when you go through, as you just saw there, you, when you go throughout the game, you'll see t checkpoints you need to reach and break into um, uh, enemy terminals, enemy computer systems, uh, open up doors and all that kind of stuff. He can do that very well. Um, War Machine's not quite so uh, quick at doing that. He's more vulnerable at that point. 
Um, also, as I said before, he, uh, he can weaponize enemies. Iron Man can weaponize enemies. War Machine can't do that because he doesn't have that ability. He doesn't have Jarvis help him out in the same way that um, Iron Man does. And then, really, you know, Iron Man will kind of think his way through problems. Uh, he'll kind of have kind of a strategic approach to, uh, to fight enemies, whereas War Machine is just going to go through them, basically. He's going he's to blow those doors down and just take everyone out. It's also an option. Now, from... Um from an upgrade standpoint, does War Machine have the same kind of upgrade options that the Iron Man armor does? Sure. So there's not as there aren't suits to choose from. War Machine just has one suit. Um, unlike obviously Tony, who has several that he's developed himself. Um, so basically, you can change those uh, that weaponry out in the same way that you can do with uh, with Iron Man. So you can choose out weapons and flip them between missions, like the minigun, the missile launcher. You can change those, and he's now using an energy blade. You can see on the screen, it's quite it's quite cool, quite new. Another great thing from the comic books. And again, he has the, those melee routines that are unique to his suit and give different abilities than um, than Iron Man's. Most of which are really based around blowing stuff up. It's, it's a classic. All right. Well, then, thank you very much, David, for people that are hungry to know more. Um, when's the game coming out, and what other kind of fan, fan surprises are you guys packing into the game? For so the game is out on May the 4th, just before the movie. It's out on Xbox 360, PlayStation 3. There's also a different game on Nintendo Wii and PSP, and, of course, the DS game is different as well. Throughout those games, uh, there are several different uh, variations, lots of characters from the movie universe, just lots of little things to discover for yourself. There's lots of replayability in terms of fabricating the suits, um, uh, approaching uh, objects in different ways, and there's some nice little characters that, if you're a fanboy, fan of the comics, or even just of the movie, um, you'll get some nice little surprises in there. Very cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, there you go. That is your look at Iron Man 2, which is due out next week on just about every platform you could think of. Check it out. I've swapped hats because it's a little lighter, but on with the rest of the show, let's find out what's happening this week on the PlayStation Network. This week on PlayStation Network, head over to the downloadable game section and kick some ass as the movie tie-in game Kick-Ass hits PSN. Bring justice to the streets of New York as Kick-Ass, Big Daddy, or Hit Girl. Kick-Ass is available for $14.99. You can also check out the record of Agarest War for $44.99. This strategy game follows the story of a young military officer who must sacrifice his life to seal the pillars of the gods on the world of Agarest. In the demo section you can check out Wakeboarding HD. This demo contains two levels with plenty of high speed and stunt filled water racing action. It's arcade style racing as you wreak havoc on this bright and colorful tropical resort. Downloadable content this week includes episodes 4 through 6 of the Blue Toad Murder Files, Just Cause 2 gets the Black Market Aerial Pack, and Mega Man 10 gets a couple of special stages and the Endless Attack Mode. Last up, check out some of the latest videos. There's a few Mod Nation Racers artist spotlights, including Ted Price and David Jaffe, flythroughs of two new multiplayer maps from the Siege Expansion Pack for Uncharted 2, and a video for 3D Dot Game Heroes that answers the question of where do heroes do their shopping. There's the latest. Check back next time to get the latest this week on PlayStation Network. So that's the PlayStation Network for you this week. As you see, I've changed hats. I'm still celebrating, but the crooked hat seems to be a better fit for my large and incredibly hard head. Yeah, this um, one doesn't really fit that well either. It's kind of like shuffling around and stuff. It also makes me wonder if the Van Ord family conquered Mongolia or Oz. Huh. Maybe you should look into it. Yeah, I don't know about that. Well, as it happens, we are moving on to something else now. Our second demo. I know, today. isn't it incredible? Yeah, Death Spank, which I actually got to check out earlier. Ron Gilbert came by to show us their Diablo meets Monkey Island game, so let's check out Death Spank right now. Hey everyone, and welcome to our daily demo. I am joined by Ron Gilbert, creator and designer of Death Spank. Welcome. Hello. Thanks. So you're here to bring us um, your game that's now complete and about to be published yes. and uh, coming out this summer. So can you tell us about Death Bank? Yeah, Death Bank, uh, it's kind of a story of this hero named Death Bank, and he's just, he's so anxious to do good for people that he often <laughs> causes, you know, more problems than he actually helps. And, of course. And so, uh, yeah, so it kind of take you a little bit uh, through the gameplay. So this is Death Bank, and he's kind of wandering around, smashing barrels, because smashing barrels is just fun. <laughs> so uh, we'll kind of fight these uh, creatures called Greens, and you have all the buttons on your uh, on your face uh, face 
face buttons, and you, you can map really any button you want to those, or any weapon you want to those buttons. And so you could, like we have the uh, cleaver uh, mapped to the Y right now. So if you do that, he does a cleave, or you can do the, the thunder stomp, which is on the A button, or you know, normal weapon, which is on the B right now. And players can really reconfigure these any way they want. They can you know, move the weapons around. If they like a different configuration, they can do that. So this is uh, your inventory of your equipment. So one thing we can do is we have this fire axe, uh, which is down below, and we're going to equip that right now. So we're going to put that, let's say, on the uh, X button, for example. So now uh, when we go back to the game and we press the X button, now he has the fire axe okay. on. So as you're going through the game and you're finding new weapons, you can just kind of equip them to any button you really want to kind of adjust uh, whatever play style you have. So you can really build up that inventory because you see all the enemies are dropping stuff constantly. Yeah, the enemies drop things. They drop weapons. They drop armor. It can all be equipped on Death's Bank. Uh, we've got these explosive barrels up there. Uh, you can go up there and hit those. So what is the goal here? Are you just taking on quests? Or? Yeah, there's a lot of quests. There's kind of an overarching story, which is really the story of, of Death's Bank and his, his, his search for this thing called the Artifact. And uh, that's how we really start out the game, because he's heard that the Demon Witch, Miss Havenstance, has the artifact. So we start the game out uh, talking to the Demon Witch, Havenstance, and then she gives us some quests that we need to go on, because she sealed the artifact deep in the demon minds. And so what we're doing right now is we're doing some uh, quests for her, and there's a fisherman that gave us some other quests. So we're doing the things that she needs to unlock the demon mines. Plus, we're just kind of leveling up, and we're you know getting different weapons and, and whatnot. So what happens when you do level? When you level up in the game, uh, you get these things called hero cards. And it's kind of the death bank's equivalent of skill points. And you can kind of choose which hero cards that you want to apply. You can only have six of them, so you kind of need to pick and choose the ones. And again, you can kind of tailor your gameplay style. So if you're a melee fighter, you pick hero cards to deal with melee stuff. If you're more of a ranged fighter, you might pick those kinds of things. So then do you only level up to six times? And then you can no, no, you can, you can level way up, but okay. there's only six that you have. So, so once you've got six hero cards, mm -hmm. you, start, you have to make some choices now. <laughs> it's like, well, I've got to get rid of one of these, and I like this one a little bit better, but I kind of like this one, but I'll replace it. So you have to really start to make some choices once you hit level six uh, with yeah. your hero cards. So where are we now? Uh, we're in the green camp, which is down by Green Lake. These are these uh, green creatures that uh, occupy, they like lakes. <laughs> there's a lot of chickens in this game as well? Yeah, there's a lot of chickens in the game. But right now what we're doing is, is the chickens, when you kill them, they drop the drumsticks. And those are on the, on the left D-pad button. So if we were to hit that button, uh, he would actually eat his food and regain health. Oh, we lies. also have a potion attached to the top D-pad button, and we can hit that, and he'll drink a potion to heal himself. There's a lot of different potions in the game. There's stealth potions, there's immunity potions, there's run speed potions. What does Justice Ready mean? Justice Ready, there's the Justice Meter, which is that glowing demon skull. And as you take damage or do damage, the Justice Meter fills up. And when it gets full, all, uh, some of your weapons have a special ability, like the cleaver, when your weapon meter is full, the cleaver does this cleave, which will hit all the enemies around you and kind of knock them back. So as you're fighting, you know, you may want the, the cleaver or there's this thunder stomp weapon, which, you know, you hit it on the ground and it stuns all the enemies. Mm -hmm. So you're building up the justice meter. Yeah. And when it gets full, you can use these abilities. Right. And just to touch on like the dialogue and stuff, this is kind of like Diablo meets Monkey Island. Can you comment about that? Yeah, the, the adventure game, it's kind of a mixture of the adventure game of Monkey Island with the RPG of Diablo, kind of an action RPG. And there's, there's a lot of humor, it's a very funny game. And the dialogues in the game I did very much in the same style that I did for Monkey Island. So you talk to characters and you have choices, and a lot of them are just funny choices. Mm -hmm. Or you can kind of ex you know, explore the dialogue trees and learn more about the backstory of the story. And if you do get stuck, is there any hint system to kind of help you on your way? Yeah, yeah, we have a really, really neat hint system. Around the world, you find them on the ground, or monsters will drop them, and, and these are fortune cookies. <laughs> and you accumulate these fortune cookies, and they you know, pretty much tell the future in a way, right? And, and you have your quest log, and you can look at all your quests on it, and if you're stuck on any particular quest, you apply a fortune cookie to the quest, and it'll give you a hint. 
And for each of the quests, there might be three or four different hints. And the first hint is just kind of a vague, kind of nudge you in the right direction. Yeah. Uh, but if you can keep applying fortune cookies, and at the very end, we'll just tell you where to go and what to kill. Do this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Some people like that. They just yeah. want to know where to go and who do I kill. And there's so, a lot of fortune cookies you can collect. Huh? Yeah, yeah. There's a, a really good economy with the fortune cookies. <laughs> All right, great. So when can we expect the game to come out and on what platforms? Uh, it'll be out in the summer and it'll be out on XBLA and PSN. All right, well, thank you so much for joining yeah, us today. Thank you, thank you. And that was our look at Death Spank. Now on with the rest of our show. We've already looked at the PlayStation 3 today, but PC gamers matter too. And to prove it, Marco Martinez is going to take a look at this week on the PC. This week on PC, we have Indie Games Prown, Paper Zombies, and your Downloads of the Week. Prown is a racing game where you play as an abstract ball that smooths out and changes shape the faster you go. You race along a cable against five other computer opponents as you must rotate around the cable to bypass large geometrical shapes and lines that stand in your way. The game is based around speed, so the slower you go, the more abstract you become slowing down your pace. Crown has a high replay value and it's in its beta form, which is available now at the GameSpot downloads page. Paper Zombies is a strategy game where you play as five marine soldiers set out to destroy the plague of paper zombies. Your squad weapons are upgradable to a sniper and or blowtorch, which gives you an advantage over your foe if you customize your squad correctly. There are special abilities such as a chemical bomb that help you defeat even the most difficult zombie swarms, but be warned, these special abilities have their side effects. Paper Zombies has a quick install, tutorial, and is now available at the GameSpot downloads page. Now for your download of the week. Mountain Blade Warband has been updated to version 1.113. The patch includes bug fixes, AI improvements, and more. I'm Marco Martinez, and that's it for this week on PC. So that was Marco with PC Games, but my question to you, Sophia, is who is Marco Martinez? You don't know who Marco Martinez is? Never heard of the guy. He's everywhere and nowhere all at once. That's, um, that's enlightening. Yeah. But you also have other stuff to enlighten us with. I yes. hear you went and took a look at Test Drive Unlimited 2. Two, yes, the sequel to the first Test Drive Unlimited. Did you play it? I did play Test Drive. So this is like the first one, but they've expanded it, and there's like a ton of new features, and you get to drive on the island of Ibiza, as well as Oahu. So let's check out more details in our interview with Test Drive Unlimited 2. <laughs> Hey everyone, Sophia here, and I'm joined by Nora Poloni, senior producer at Eating Games, here to show us Test Drive Unlimited 2. Welcome. Thank you. And so, Test Drive Unlimited 2, sequel to the first one. Uh, so tell us, like, overall, like, what can we be expecting? Test Drive Unlimited 2 is about um, an MMO racing game type of game. And uh, the idea is that your objective is to become rich and famous and acquire the most beautiful and desirable cars in the world. So now in the first game, we raced around, like, in the island of Oahu. So where are we going this time? Uh, this time we've added in a completely new island, which is Ibiza, and you'll be able to discover this completely Mediterranean island with different landscapes. You got historical buildings, narrow roads, and it's really a completely different atmosphere than Oahu. So what are the new features in this game, like things that you want to highlight? Uh, the main features that we've concentrated on is that we really reworked in terms of the car experience itself. Like for example, we reworked completely the car dynamics, added vehicle damage, new terrain, all-terrain vehicles. Um, another key element we did is we reworked in terms of the, um, the uh, multiplayer aspects. Like for example, the connections between the players, making sure that they stay together all the time. Um, added notions of like you can create clubs and be members of uh, clubs. Um, we've also added the new game modes linked to that, um, customization possibilities. Um, another element is that we added a new offline experience uh, with narration and also new game modes. So it's really, we've extended this, it's practically twice as big as the first one. Yeah, there's a lot of features there, but like, let's uh, go into more detail about some of them, like the social networking part of it. Could you go into uh, detail about that? Yes, we really wanted to focus on the um, uh, online aspect, push that even further than the first one. So for example, today you can meet up with any other player anywhere uh, in any meeting points, like if you go in a car dealer or at your home and things like that, you can meet up on players. And this is like hugely from the first test drive, when before you could only meet up in free ride sessions. And the idea is that you can meet up through your avatar, you can have animations to say hi, you have like specific identity files to get to know them better and uh, really you'll be able to share a lot of experience together online. 
And speaking of cars, like what cars can you actually tell us that will be in the game right now? Oh, our objective is really to have license-based cars and um, the high-end type of cars, so really the most desirable cars you can think of. So in terms of like graphically, like how the game looks, like has anything changed in terms of um, you know like time passing? Yes, we've integrated the notion of night and day cycle in the game. So you will have a full night and day cycle. It will be the same for every player because it's based on the game server, and it's like a two and a half hour. So for example, if you play every day at the same time, you won't find yourself at the same time of day in the game. So how big is the game? Like, how much road are we talking about? You said there is going to be off-road as well. So, like, how long would it take to drive around this entire island? So just for Ibiza itself, we have over 930 kilometers of roads. You've got, of that 930 kilometers, you've got 310 kilometers of off-road that you'll be able to explore. So you mentioned just Ibiza, so what other islands are we exploring here? Um, we've got Ibiza in, um, but you can also go to explore Hawaii. So Hawaii, you'll be, it'll be a completely different experience for those who knew the first test drive. We've completely reworked the graphics um, to include the day and night cycle and the weather conditions, for example. But also we've added in 600 kilometers of um, asphalt and off-road roads. We've changed the different missions and the challenges to new places. We've integrated in the new game progression. So basically you'll be rediscovering Hawaii in a new light. Could you talk a bit more about the challenges and what changes have been made and what's been kept the same? Uh, in terms of the challenges, we've really developed a lot of the multiplayer challenges. We've added in like a new uh, online gameplay, which is the cooperative experience. So some of the different challenges you'll be able to do and the cooperative experience are really cool. Any plans for DLC in the future? Definitely. We are aiming to make sure that we have a DLC plan in, um, for after the release of the game uh, with community management. And we want to make sure that all the new content replies to the community feedback. What about motorcycles? Is that, that going to be included? Um, we are thinking of doing motorcycles, definitely, like from the first test drive. Uh, we just want to make sure it's 100% perfect. Um, we've changed the car dynamics, so we want to make sure that works exactly as we want it to. So motorcycles will be coming out later from day one. So when is the game coming out and on what platform? It's coming out this fall on PS3, 360, and PC. All right, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And that was our very first look at Test Drive Unlimited 2. Be sure to check back on the game space for more coverage. Well, Sophia, there you are proving again that you are everywhere at once. That's true. I think you were also in Las Vegas not so long ago. Yes, I was in Las Vegas last week. So uh, Bethesda's Gamers Day was happening, and we'll have coverage of that next week. I would have brought some stuff to give away, but do you know what I've got? Nothing? Absolutely nothing. Not even your hats? Not even my hats. The hats come with me. I still have to celebrate. Oh, okay. It is Uno de Mayo. All right, let's go celebrate then. Absolutely. So I guess that kind of wraps up the day, and we look forward to seeing you next week on On The Spot. Thanks for joining us today on Uno de Mayo. I'm Kevin Van Ord. This is Sophia Tong, and we wish you a fond adieu. And that about wraps up our show for today. Thursday, May something or another. I forgot the date. Saturday. Hi.